Greetings, Deep Dive Podcast listeners. This is your boy, Sam Orham, coming at you with another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. Guys, we're closing out Black History Month this week, February 23rd. Man, time is really flying. We've gone through the entire month in terms of talking about Black history topics from, you know, the past, it may be. But tonight's episode, we're going to talk about how to focus forward. What do we need to do as Black people moving forward? But before I get into the episode, I want to thank all of you who have been supporting the podcast. You know, we're in season three, so we've done a lot of episodes. We've met a lot of people, spoke to a lot of people, and um, I don't take that for granted. So I thank you so very much. We're looking forward to continually bringing you message of uh, entertainment and empowerment. So I thank you for your support. Those of you who are new, I want to welcome you to the Deep Dive Podcast. And, you know, we're always looking to expand our base of listeners and viewers. So welcome to the Deep Dive Podcast. Make sure you go join the Facebook group at the Deep Dive Podcast with Sam Orham. Same thing with YouTube. Um, We're on Spotify, Apple, Google, all of the podcast platforms. So make sure that you continue to support. And those of you who are new, we welcome your support. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about focusing forward. As you know, over the past, uh, what, four weeks throughout Black History Month, we've been talking about various topics from, you know, I think we started out the beginning of the month just talking about, uh, you know, what's going on around the world of, of, you know, the Black community and things that was going on with the um, the killings in Tennessee, uh, Memphis, with Tyree Nichols and so forth and so on. Then we talked about you know, eight keys to success um, in terms of building a black business. And then the third, last week we talked about, um, what was it uh, we talked about last week, black integrity, you know, having integrity as you continue to build and live. Go back and take a listen to those episodes uh, throughout the month of black history, throughout the month of February, so that you can be up to speed in terms of where we are and why we're progressing in the manner that we're doing. Now that we're closing out Black History Month, I want to be able to focus forward. I'm always about focusing forward. My mentor shared with me and kind of reiterated um, recently that we need to make sure that we continue to focus forward. So that being the case, what do Black people need to do or focus on moving forward? We have a, a Herculean task in terms of really coming together as a community, uh, really coming together as you know, business owners, coming together as social interaction recipients or whatever it may be, right? We have a huge responsibility. And one of the things that I have been lacking on, and I, I think that a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people, um, need to really kind of put a little more emphasis and effort into moving forward that's you know advocating racial justice racial equality i think sometimes we get too comfortable with all of the things that are going on and just like it's just normal you know people just are killed or mistreated or you know abused or you know, a lot of times we don't want to get involved or just kind of look at it like, yep, here we go again kind of thing. But I, I think that's the wrong idea. I think that's the wrong idea. And I'm guilty of it as well. But I think it's the wrong idea. I think we need to take a more moving forward, more of a proactive approach in terms of advocating for racial justice and equality, advocating for the things that can prevent, you know, some of the things that happen with like a Tyree Nichols or what's happening financially or why banks denying black people at a the higher rate than anybody else. Or, you know, all of those type type things. Being able to continue to fight against uh, systemic racism. Don't take that stuff. You don't have to take it. You don't have to take it. You know why most people take it? Because they don't have the capacity to circumvent it. What does that mean? Well, either they don't have money. They don't take forth uh, the effort to educate themselves on certain things. Uh, For Let me give an example, like for credit. The reason people will take a denial for, you know, 
some type of credit issue is because they don't understand credit. These people are pay, playing a game with credit. <clears throat> you know, your credit score, the FICO score, all of this stuff is made, man-made. It's all manipulating, right? It is designed to do exactly what it's doing, keep the oppressed oppressed. If you don't educate yourself, then you can't circumvent what that means. And if you do educate yourself and you can circumvent that because everybody, every, every person should have and could have a 700 or above credit score if you just knew the game that they're playing. And once you get there, you can prevent systemic racism because now when a bank denies you simply because of who you are, you understand the laws. You understand what they're supposed to do. You know, you understand what they can and cannot do based on the law. So you don't have to just take racism. But if you don't educate yourself, then you're subjected to systemic racism. You know, promoting equal rights treatment. You got to be able to do that. Giving opportunities to other Black people. We, um, and I don't know the exact number, but the Black community spend a whole heck of a lot of money in particular America. And um, and I say that because I know we got listeners from all over the world. We spend a lot of money. Wonder if we decided to just kind of pool our resources and supported each other, what we could actually do. I read a book um, years ago. It was by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I think it's called A Message to a Black Man in America. And um, in that book, he talked about economics. He talked about, I don't know why the number 70 keeps popping in my mind, but it may be like page 70 in that book, Message to a Black Man in America. But he talked about economics, talked about what we can do in terms of opportunities if we just supported each other, talked about, and I want to say it's been a while, but, you know, farming, growing your own food. Wonder if you grew your own food, not only to just take care of, feed your own family or feed your neighbors and this kind of thing, but feed your community and wonder what would happen if we supported each other in that endeavor. You know, these are the type of things that are important that can help us circumvent systemic racism because when we start buying from each other here's how you get rid of a lot of racism take money out of the racist pockets <laughs> take money out of the racist pocket because the one thing that racists hate worse than black people or brown people the one thing that they hate worse than that in a lot of cases i'm talking about the influential races now is being broke they hate that worse than so they'll they'll put up with a black or brown person if they can make money from it. I'm talking about I'm talking about the influential. Now you got some other races that just racist because they don't even know why. They just racist because. <laughs> so you can get rid of that just um understanding and being able to circumvent that just through education and empowerment. Speaking of empowerment, you know, something else that you want to be able to do and focus and forward is you want to empower yourself through education. See, you're talking about circumventing these things that are going on around you. Like I talked about with credit and all these other things that are designed to oppress, right? Well, you get, go through education. I think for me, and I know this is going to be a bit controversial, but, you know, having gone through the educational system, you know, undergraduate and all this other kind of stuff, the, the educational system, I do see the value in it. But the value in it is not as, and this is a controversial part, I think there's a lot of, of opportunities for you to do more, even above and beyond the quote unquote educational system. And the reason I say that is a lot of things that you learn in the educational system, it may teach you how to conform as opposed to how to thrive. Let me explain. 3% um, of the people control 97% of the money. Okay, 3% of the people control 97% of the money. Now, most of the people in the 97 percentile you know, when you're going through the educational system, you're going through the educational system to get a job, get a good job that has good benefits. Don't get me wrong. I'm not poo-pooing that at all. That's exactly what you should be doing. 
But when I talk about the controversial part, when you're talking about being one in, in that three percent, then you got to be above and beyond just that education. You got to know uh, the nuances of why you're oppressed. You got to know the law behind the law. You got to know the politics behind the law. You know all of these things that are that that are not taught in the educational system, right? So you have to marry those two ideologies in terms of getting your, your I call it the, the paper education, your diploma. You need to get that. I'm not poo-pooing that at all, as I said. Uh, but if you're talking about being the, in the three percent, which is which is my deal, my goal, um, then it has to be something more. So you have to be able to distinguish that. But at the end of the day, I said this a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. Education is not just some, sometimes the, the, the paper, the, the degree, the diploma. It is just getting a skill set and developing a skill set through, you know, doing it, <laughs> through doing it, through research, through, you know, YouTube University. But you got to empower yourself through education. That's going to be very important. Investing in education, investing in Black people's education. Start saving up money for your, your child's tuition. You know, these things are very important. Economic development. This is something as we move forward, economic development, guys, look, we gotta at some point break this chain, this curse, this chain, if you will, of lack, of poverty, of, of not being able to leave wealth from generation to generation. If First thing you have to be able to do is distinguish between rich and wealth. Well, you can't pass riches from generation to generation. You may be a doctor, you may be an attorney, you may be an accountant, and you may be rich. But guess what happens? You can't pass your doctor's degree or your, your education from generation to generation. You can't pass rich. You can only pass wealth. And that's what we need to start creating as a community as we look forward, as we focus forward. We need to start creating wealth and, 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 you know, and stop worrying about riches and worrying about wealth. I talked to a, a, a black doctor recently. He's like, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. If I'm a black doctor, um, I can, you know, build my wealth. And, um, and I can pass that on to, to my son. It doesn't necessarily have to be my degree, I can build wealth and I can pass that on. Yes, sir, that is true. But what happens when you stop being seeing patients? What happens to that wealth when you stop seeing patients? I'll wait. You see, wealth is going to come while you sleep. Wealth come, you people, wealthy people make money while you sleep. And my doctor friend, you're my friend, you're my buddy. But stop paying, stop seeing patients to see what happens to that wealth. I'm still waiting. I hadn't gotten that answer yet. So there is a very distinct difference between being rich and being wealthy. What we need to start focusing in on moving forward is to build wealth, creating jobs through that wealth, supporting Black-owned businesses like I talked about a couple of weeks ago, and to increase the financial stability and security of generations yet unborn. We should be setting up our kids and our grandkids setting it up right now for a successful future you can't say that it, it you know it can't be done because other uh, um, groups of people have done this for generations rockefellers kennedys you know i mean this thing can be done we just got to do it we just have to do it set us up for success something as simple as a life insurance policy a lot of people don't know there's a value to a life insurance policy while you're living that's another topic for another day, but there's a value to the a life insurance policy while you're living. We need to study up on these things. We need to understand what a trust is. We need to understand what a living trust is. We need to understand how these things can impact and affect generations in terms of wealth. Very important. It's very important as we focus forward. Something else is very important, and we talk about this a lot, but your health and your fitness, your health and your wellness. We take this, you know, for granted in so many aspects. You know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. Again, once again, when I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong. And I'm guilty because, I, man, I love to eat. I love sweets. I, I just, I, I don't know. 
and I'm but I'm trying. I'm taking all kind of you know. Supplements for my we got to start addressing health disparities and also promoting wellness within the black community. We got to start doing that. Now, there are a lot of people who are doing it. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people who are doing it. <clears throat> but we got to do it even more. And wonder if we started to create entities, enterprises, like vegan restaurants, right? I, uh, I've i had an opportunity to eat vegan food. And I got to tell you, as much as I like to eat, vegan food is cool. It's great. I don't miss anything if I'm eating vegan food. Now, I'm still going to eat me some, you know, I call it regular food. <laughs> I'm still going to eat me some regular food. But if I'm eating a vegan meal, I'm I'm good. I ate a, 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 a veggie burger. I was somewhere, I think it was in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. I was in Lexington, Kentucky uh, a few months ago. Um, and I ate this veggie veggie burger from this nice restaurant, and uh, it was man, it was delicious. It was I couldn't even tell it wasn't meat. It was delicious, man. It, it was great. Now for me, I'm lazy. I'm not going to a lot of times go out of my way to find a vegan restaurant or cook a vegan meal and all this other kind of stuff. That's just that's just being lazy. But my point in in that is this: wonder if we created a community where we would um, have vegan restaurants or grocery stores that sold um, organic foods that we own. I'm talking about ones that we own or, you know, uh, farms. I think I, uh, one of my friends, Aisha Aipo, I think she um, and some of her, her peers, um, they're advocates of good, healthy eating through farming, they share their foods, they share, you know, um, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about with the community where if we can work together, see, I don't mind eating healthy, if it, but me being lazy, it's like, you know, if it ain't convenient, I'm gonna get what's convenient. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna pop some wings in the air fry and keep it moving. Right. That's just me. I just that's just one of my things because I'm, I'm doing so many other things. I'm, I'm, I'm busy with my entrepreneurial endeavors that I ain't going to drive across town for a vegan restaurant. I'm just going to pop some wings in the air fry and keep it moving. I wonder if it's more convenient because we've come together and pooled our resources and we have vegan restaurants and, you know, uh, whole food uh, grocery stores, not the, the chain, but just uh, organic foods, and things of that nature. It's also it's building. Black enterprise, enterprises, but it's also making it convenient for us to live a, a healthy and, and a uh, fit life. My company, One Voice Worldwide, we have um, all natural supplements. We have black seed oil, pure oil. It is 100% uh, pure oil, cold pressed from black seeds because we promote and advocate for good health. We have healthy supplements. We have something called immune defense where it has been our top selling product because of COVID and all these other things that have, uh, it's 15 different um, um, ingredients, including, you know, echinacea and vitamin C and D and, you know, turmeric, turmeric and all these other type things that are natural that helps in terms of health and wellness. Wonder if people were, you know, supporting my black business, my business partners, black business all of these the representatives who we have out here supporting their businesses just by getting the immune defense or the black seed oil or the you know all of the other 15 supplements that we have that's the design to help you in your healthy healthy endeavors we make it convenient for you we have it come ship right to your door how much more convenient can it be right but then you're also helping a black business you're helping your health and wellness 
But here's the thing that we would typically do because, you know, we just don't understand and we don't want to support. We'll go right to, to Walmart or Walgreens or this or that. And even in some cases, pay more for a lesser quality of product. Come on, guys. All of this that we've talked about the last four weeks, it fits hand in glove. If we're creating enterprises for each other, we're creating black owned businesses, creating black owned e commerce, creating opportunities for each other, then supporting each other. And then, oh, yeah, we're going to get healthy in the process. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. That's something that we should do. Something else that I, you know, if I had, if two things I, I probably would have considered if I was my 18 year old self again, two things. One, I may have been uh, considered being an attorney going into the legal field as opposed to uh, the medical field. I may have uh, decided to, to consider being an attorney. One of the reasons is um, I'm very good at being a contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> you're not just going to tell me something and think, you know, uh, I'm not just going to go for it. You're not going to piss on me and tell me it's raining. I'm not going for that. Right. And so I have developed a mindset where, first of all, I'm going to find out for myself. I never listen to they. I always hear people like they said, who is they? You know, I tell this story over and over and over again to make my point. Because, but a very good friend of mine in the beginning of COVID, like, well, you know, black people can't get COVID because we got all this melanin and, you know, COVID can't attack the melanin and all of this stuff. And okay, let me know how that worked out for you. As you had COVID, by the way. So I don't listen to they, right? So for me, um, I just want to be in a situation where, you know, I'm advocating and promoting things that will put us in a situation to win. And I think for me, I would have been a good attorney because I'm not going to take no mess. And, and these other you know, attorneys, they're not going to just say something and, and think it's going to ride. It's not going to work. That, that wouldn't work for me. The other thing that I, I would have considered if I was my 18-year-old self is a political um, career, career in politics. I say my 18 year old self because my my 20 or 30 year old self is too late. They're too much. I do too much stuff. <laughs> it's too much stuff. I you know you know how they dig up all of your dirt. Nah, by the time it's my 20 or 30 year old self, uh, nah, it is it, it, too late. They that let that sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> so, but my 18 year old self, I might have considered a political. Uh, career. Here's why. Because we need people who can advocate for our issues, who can speak intelligently, articulately, and knowledge and have knowledge of what we need in the Black community. So if you are your 18-year-old self and you're listening, it may be one of the things that you can consider in terms of, you know, political rep uh, represent rep representation and engagement. But the other thing that we all need to do, and everybody need to hear this, we all need to vote. We all need to vote. I've heard people say this, you know, just it don't matter. They're all the same. Um, my one vote don't matter. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. I hear this stuff every voting cycle. Guys, the House of Representatives right now, I think it's a four or five seat swing. And had just the people who told me that they weren't going to vote voted, you know, the House could have been in a totally different space, which means a lot of things that are important to you may have been in a different space. Every vote matters. And even if you, you're of the notion that all politicians are the same, and to a degree, I agree with that. I, I think they all lie. Democrats, Republicans, independent, all of them lie. They all lie. You know, they just they're just pathetic liars. Some of them lie with good intentions, and some of them lie with bad intentions, but they all lie. So anyway, even if you believe that, then vote anyway, because people 
sacrificed their lives to give you that opportunity to vote. So you got to vote. As we focus forward, regardless of what you think or feel or, or however you may think that your vote doesn't matter, do it anyway because people sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice of their lives just for you to have an opportunity to vote. So don't tell, take that for granted. Right? So that's very important. And as I close out, as we continue to focus forward, I'm closing out now. Um, understand that we need to start preserving um, our culture. We, we need to start preserving our culture. We need to talk about it more. See, we got a the, the the there are a lot of people, and I said this. I think the first week of Black History Month, there are a lot of people like Ron DeSantis in Florida who they're subtly trying to erase the culture to empower their own personal racist agendas. Okay. They're, they're looking to do that. And, you know, one thing, one good thing about Black people, if you're obvious about what you're doing, oh, we're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to march. We're going, we going, you know, Whatever we need to do, if you're obvious about what you're doing, you're going to come up against some, some opposition. But here's how the shrewd people who are trying to manipulate you operate. They don't operate in the obvious. They operate in subtlety. They take away a book here. They take away a right here. They try to redistrict and take away this, and they do it subtly. It's nothing for them to have a 10-year plan to subtly remove this, this, and this, and this. And so while we're, you know, uh, uh, playing on TikTok, while we're, you know, going to clubs, or while we're doing all these other things that are counterproductive, they're slowly taking these things away right before your very eyes. You know, they would tell you, if you want to hide something from some, some of us, put it in a book, right? Man, and I'm talking about myself. All of I mean, I'm you know, I'm a part of this. I'm just keeping it real. Is it okay that I keep it real? I'm just keeping it real. Well, what we have to do is we got to start preserving our culture. We have to make sure that the things that you know we value, the things that we have created, people know that. People know and understand that we have created this. There's a term called edification. And edification means to give the credentials or to give or highlight certain things about a person, place, or thing, right? We need to start edifying each other as people. We need to start edifying each other as communities, as business owners. You know, we need to support each other through edification and cultural preservation. We got to start doing that. Cultural expression. We got to start doing that. You know, instead of a lot of times if we're wearing, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, someone else's um, uh, fashion, right? Why not? Why not start supporting a black fashion designer and edify that fashion designer's clothing or home decor or whatever it may be? Talk about it. Tweet about it. We're tweeting about other people's stuff. Why not tweet about your own stuff? Why not tweet about your own stuff and then start to create intergenerational support and intergenerational mentorship where we're not just doing this and keeping it to ourselves. We're doing it and teaching it. We're doing it and creating, you know, uh, baby entrepreneurs. Baby entrepreneurs. I remember um, when I started out of business and my mindset was shifting. And, uh, you know, I was teaching certain things to my son. And um, I noticed one time we were going to a restaurant and he said something young, young, I mean, really young, and was talking about, you know, what would it take for us to own a restaurant like this? That made me so proud because it was telling me that he's listening. He's listening to the entrepreneurial endeavors 
because I would go into a place and instead of me just going down and, and, and sitting down and eating a meal, I'm looking around like, man, you know, it, it would be great. It would be great to have a restaurant like this, you know, and so the, the wheels started turning in my head. It turned in my head to the point where I did have a restaurant in Montgomery, Alabama. It was called Sam's Country Cooking and More. <laughs> Sam's Country Cooking and More. Man, that was the biggest flop because I ain't know nothing about restaurants. I just do. I wanted a restaurant. <laughs> I went to one of the hardest businesses. Went to one of the hardest businesses to succeed in the restaurant industry at this country, Sam's Country Cooking and More. And uh, and more because we had a, a bar side over there, a sports bar. So it was a restaurant on one side, a sports bar on the other side. And uh, man, that thing fell miserably. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. And then bless their heart, I had my mom, my two sisters working there. And, you know, uh, we just uh, we didn't know, have a clue. We just we just knew we had a restaurant. Couldn't even couldn't do that. That was just wasted about six hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in that endeavor. But. It did open my son's mindset to the possibilities of ownership, you know, not just going to a restaurant. What, what do we own one? Now, I never get into the restaurant business again. That's just me because I don't have that skill set. But I always, always have my eyes open for that intergenerational opportunity. How can now I create an opportunity for that next generation and generations yet unborn? I travel a lot. So a lot of times I go into these cities and I see a lot of oppressed areas or I see a lot of areas that are run down and my mind start just, you know, I just start getting these ideas. Like, wonder if I just came in here and bought this entire block, just tore everything down and started over with something, you know? And again, if I was my 18, 20 year old self, I would do something like that. At this point now I'm looking for things where I can just do it online, you know, e-commerce subscription based. I, <laughs> but that's what you want to be able to do create intergenerational support mentorship you know teach these business people how to be business people one thing I, I used to love about I watch a lot of these old westerns and old television shows that you know they would always teach their 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 sons in particular but they would teach their kids um, about their craft like if you're, they were a blacksmith they would teach their son how to be a blacksmith and then they would teach, you know, this, that, and the other, and that skill passed through generations. That's important. You know, uh, uh, providing support and mentorship is very, very important, especially to the younger generations, generations yet unborn, as I said, creating opportunities for growth and success. Look, guys, there are a lot of things that we need to do as we move forward. The first thing is we just have to develop a mindset of winning. You see the book here, The Mindset of a Champion. I don't talk about it a lot because I'm not here to promote the book. But in this particular case, I do want you to understand success as we move forward is about a mindset. We have to create a certain type of mindset to win. Champions think a certain way, right? And when we can develop that kind of mindset, we can eliminate stinking thinking. We can position ourselves to do great things just by the way we think, the way we carry ourselves, like we talked about last week with uh, Black Integrity. The way we do those things, it's going to be important as we move forward. So we have to start thinking like a champion. We have to start thinking like a winner. We have to start thinking like an entrepreneur. We have to start thinking in a certain way to succeed. So as we close out Black History Month and continue with our Black History lives or our Black lives, right, we need to take all of these things that we talked about over the last four weeks into consideration. And we need to expound upon them. We need to learn. We need to educate ourselves. We need to study. We need to grow. We need to grow personally. We need to grow professionally. We need mentorship and support. We need to share um, love and support amongst each other. One thing that I, you know, it was really difficult coming up, you know, to, to either, even tell your brothers or tell guys that you love them because they like, oh, either you're gay or you're stupid or something. You know, black men don't cry, all of these things. You know, it, it was just difficult. And it wasn't until I got older where I realized how stupid that was because if you love somebody, tell them you love them. If I tell you I love you, I love you. You know what I mean? I don't care if you're a girl, a guy, a kid, it doesn't matter. If I tell you I love you, I love you. And I don't care what nobody else think about that. But you have to do that because you don't know what people are going through mentally. 
And just, just the fact that you would tell your brother or your friend or your neighbor that you love them or give them a smile or an attaboy, you don't know how much that could mean to a lot of people. We have to start doing that going forward. Don't worry about it. If you're a black man and you got to cry, cry. I don't know where all of this foolishness start from in the first place. You got to cry, cry. That don't show weakness. It shows that you got emotions. You know, a lot of this stuff that was created back in the day, it was created again to keep you in a certain place. Well, we're beyond that now. And as we focus forward, we got to do the things that's going to help us become better. So whatever that means, we got to be able to do that. So with that, guys, I appreciate you for tonight's episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. I also appreciate you for supporting the entire month of Black history. Um, going into the month of March, we're going to do more uh, guests. It's time for us to kind of transition into some of our guests, a little more entertainment, a little more light subjects. We're still going to do the um, empowerment stuff. And I have a whole list of things from the, uh, the Facebook group that I want to go through in particular, uh, you know, business stuff, credit stuff, you know, that, those type things. We're going to do that. But I think for the month of March, we're going to put a lot more attention into some of our guests. So, but with that, thank you for a great, great Black History Month. Thank you for your support. Continue to support, download, subscribe. And I'm not just, I don't just say this every week, y'all. Please do it. Help me out. Help a brother out. You know, subscribe, download, share these podcasts. I see everything. I see who's sharing and not sharing. Share the podcast, right? Go to the website, the deep dive podcast live. Go there and buy me a cup of coffee. There's a little thing on there that says, buy me a cup of coffee. Now, it's, it's really not that I want you to buy me a cup of coffee. I want you to go look at all those episodes. I probably have in three seasons upwards of 100 ep episodes, and there's a lot of content there that can empower your life. So if it takes you going there to get me a cup of coffee just to see all of these episodes and to click in and empower yourself, then do that. But at the end of the day, we want to do this together. We're a family. We're a team. We're a deep dive podcast community. We're talking about communities. We're a community that's around the world. I have a guest that's coming up, uh, I think it's in March, maybe April, uh, in London or from London. And she's going to blow you away. She is going to absolutely blow you away. I, I may even be in London to do that episode. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, we're going to make some great things happen with our community. So continue to support. Go to the podcast on uh, YouTube. Um, Instagram, Facebook, wherever we are. All right. God bless you guys. And I'll see you on the beaches of the world. Let's keep being great.